don't rush and get your Blue Yeti out of the closet yet. Okay, because the first thing you're going to need is a Stream Deck Plus to make this happen. So my name is John Ryan from Coffee Talk and Tech, and we're here to talk about how to upgrade your audio and your video for live streaming and YouTube. I recently did a video about using your audio interface with the Stream Deck Plus. I'm going to put that right here in case you want to watch that. This is basically going to be for using any USB microphone with the Stream Deck Plus. So we're just going to be happening to use the Blue Yeti and we're going to use it and we're going to make it sound really good. So I don't care how cheap of a USB mic you have, we're going to be able to transform it and make it sound really good. And you'll be able to route that with the Wavelink software and use it in your gaming, in your YouTube, in your live streaming. So let's get into this video right now. Okay, so now's the time you should go and get your Blue Yeti out of the closet. So grab that and let's get started. I just want you to take note that when we start, I'll be using my mic that is on the boom stand. And then when this is activated, the Blue Yeti will switch over to that mic. Before you get started, I just want to make sure you're on the correct polar pattern. So when you're facing the gain knob and the polar patterns, you should be on the third polar pattern. That's the cardioid polar pattern. So you'd be talking to the other side of the mic that has the volume for the headphones. And then also you want to have the gain counterclockwise all the way down unless you have to make an adjustment later. And everyone's going to be different depending on what software you're using. Also at this point, you should have updated your Stream Deck Plus and the Wavelink software. And now we're going to be ready to add an input. So if we go over to the software itself, don't worry about how I have my software set up. Um, everybody's going to be different. I already had Wavelink products. So right now we're, there's going to be a Wavelink mic that's not connected. And then I'm using an audio interface with a mic connected right here. And we're going to add another input and I'll pull it over into the second position. So it's going to be as simple as hitting add audio input. We're going to use auxiliary one because when you use the Wavelink with the Stream Deck Plus, they always use auxiliary one and auxiliary two. So even if you chose something else, I noticed that it forced me to one or two. So let's choose that as your input. So after you're connected by USB, you will see it in the list here. It says microphone right here, Yeti stereo microphone. We're going to connect that. Um, but right now we're connected. I'm just going to move this over so it doesn't get distracting. We'll put it in the second slot. I'm going to unmute and I'm going to mute myself over here. Okay. Now you're picking me up on the blue Yeti mic. So I can see that I'm peaking. So I'm going to pull this down. And this is going out to the stream. And so when I bring this down, that will control the volume as far as going out so I won't peak. All right, so right now, as simple as that, we are connected to the Blue Yeti microphone. So I'm gonna place this microphone off to the side. So at this point, it was that easy to connect your Blue Yeti. The next thing I would do is get a pair of headphones or something to monitor your audio. So you'll plug that right directly into the Blue Yeti microphone underneath, and you'll be able to hear yourself speaking into the mic. And also that will let you hear anything that's played through the Wavelink software, and you'll be able to monitor things um, in the volumes like that. So that's the way you're going to want to do it. So I have my headphones in and I adjust the volume in the front of the Blue Yeti. And right where the mute is, there's the volume for the headphones right below. That's how you adjust to be able to hear yourself. Okay, so that's the first thing you need to do. Then the next thing we're going to go right into the software. One of the first things you're going to want to do also is go right into the outputs. And you can listen to yourself in here at speakers, Yeti, stereo microphone. And there you are. So that's your monitor mix and you're going to want you're going to hear yourself double if you go and when you change this over but you're going to mute yourself in your headphones 
and so you don't hear double audio. So we're into the software. We see the mic right here activated. You're seeing the stream output. So anytime you see the stream output moving down here, you definitely know you're getting audio out to the stream. Okay, so first things first, right in the middle, that little whatever looks like a heartbeat monitor thing, right? That's your VST audio effects. You're gonna click on the plus and it says get more audio effects, okay? You can see that below, I have a few already in here, but if you click this, it actually takes you over to Elgato's website. So this was, I clicked that button and this popped up and it shows all the recommended VSTs over at Elgato. Okay, you'll have directions on how to install them. And when you download them, things like noise gates, compressors, all the VSTs to do what we're doing today. Okay, noise removal, uh, vocal effects, de -esser. Okay, so all those things are going to be in there. And you're going to go through those things and take a look. But right now I'm going to give you some suggestions. So let's go in and I'm going to add my first VST. All right, and my first VST is going to be an Elgato EQ. And here it is. Here's our Elgato equalizer. And simply scroll this over. This would replace the low cut filter that you had with the Wavelink mics. So if you move this over into about 100 hertz, that would be a low pass filter. And then when you want to activate a band, we'll just double click and that activates this band and now it's attached and we can right click and this will pick high pass, high shelf, band pass, low shelf. I'm going to pick like, let's just pick a band pass and it shows you what it looks like. It's a little bit tighter. So when you pull down or up so you can sweep through these frequencies and bring down certain frequencies in different areas. And this is what it would do. So I know myself that around 2000 kilohertz, I have a little, not the most pleasant sounds. So I'm going to go around there and I'm going to drop it down just about two DB. And then I'm going to pull this over. I'm going to change the shelf on this one. And I'm going to put band pass also, and I'm just going to give a little bit of a lift around 8,000 just to give a little brightness, 8,200. All right. And then what I can do is if I want to, again, I could double click and then I get another band right here and then we can raise the front up, get a little boominess. Now it's going to change the way it sounds and everybody's voice is different. So just take note that when you make these changes, it's going to fit your voice. Don't do exactly what I'm doing. Um, this is for my voice. So just take note, listen through. You're going to have to, you're not going to hear the changes because these are VSTs. When you're listening to the mic, it's not the finished product. The finished product's going to go through the recording. You're going to have to go back and listen to your recordings and make the changes on the fly right now. You have the EQ set up. So if we go into the software, we see the EQ. You can delete the EQ here and you can pop it up right here and you can make your changes at any time. You can also mute it so you can turn it off right now and you can do a little recording and you can then turn it back on and listen to the difference. And so you're you're welcome to do those types of things, too. But let's let's not get stuck on this. Let's just start with our second um, VST. So we're going to go down to the green and when this turns green on the, on the bottom of the channel, that means that you have active VSTs. Okay. So let's add another one and we're going to add the loud max by Thomas Mund, but I'm just going to adjust this. So no matter what is our output is not going to go past a certain level. So here's our output. I'm not going to let it go past nine and then what I like to do is make this at like 12 and then as loud as it gets is like nine and it sh pushes down. You can see it pushing down so we can't peak. That's your limiter. So we just added like a clip guard 
type of situation, which was the other thing that was taking out of the Elgato software when you're not using their mic. So now you got both of those things, basically a low pass filter and the limiter restored. It's as quick as that. You're pretty much setting yourself up for success right there. Already this mic is going to be sounding really good, but the one thing that you're going to notice that if you haven't at this point, or maybe you've been using the Yeti mic for a while and then you stopped using it because it was so sensitive. I mean, it is an ultra sensitive condenser USB mic. So even if it sounds good, it was just picking up so much noise that a lot of people can't use this, but we're going to correct that and it's going to be a pretty easy fix and it's pretty amazing actually too. And again, you're getting all this stuff for free and we're going to add our last VST for today. Go click, click plus. You're going to go into Elgato and the Elgato noise remover. This is a one click solution. So let's just try this out first. All it is, is you turn this off and then you turn that on. So again, I can hear right away that the background is much quieter. And so if I'm quiet right now for three seconds, listen. Okay, and now I'm gonna turn it off. And now it's back on. So already that is gonna be a great solution for people to be able to really quiet their background down and make this mic sound really good. Brings the noise floor down and you have an EQ to adjust and then you got a limiter. We're bringing all these USB mics back to life and this is going to be great. And a lot of people are going to be buying the Stream Deck Plus for a lot of different other things. And this is just a huge addition if you bought it to be able to use the Wavelink software that comes with the Stream Deck. So don't forget that the Stream Deck is a multifaceted tool and there's a lot of things that it can do, but it also comes with that Wavelink software that allows you to add an audio interface or your own personal USB mic. I hope this helped you. And if it did in any way, please just give me a, maybe a boop on the like button or perhaps subscribe. We talk a lot about this kind of stuff, improving your audio and your video for YouTube and any kind of live streaming platform. And this kind of stuff can really help people better themselves. And if you noticed a lot of these things we talked about, it's a lot of free applications. So we're using a mic that I picked up for $40 used. And so I can use this as an example in here in the software. I never had a blue Yeti mic before and I have it here and it sounds so much better now that we have those VSTs included.